In this video, I'm going to test out ChatGPT's latest feature, which is Chat with Images. If you've got it in your account, first of all, you will need a Plus account, which is only 20 US dollars a month, so very, very good value. You just go to GPT-4, and then down the bottom here, you will see this, Chat with Images. A little bubble will appear like that if you have it in your account. And then you can start uploading images and asking questions about it. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. Video, we're going to run through a whole load of different features that this brings to us. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a picture of my office or my pretend office. It's not my actual office. And you'll see it in just a second. And I'm going to see how we could improve this office a little bit. It's a very minimalistic photo, as you'll see. And I would really like to warm up my office a little bit. So let's see if we can get ChatGPT to give me some advice on how to do that. Can you please take a look at this photo of my office? and let me know some suggestions as to how I can make it appear a little warmer and more home-like. There we go. So there's the picture and as you can see it is pretty you know boring and plain and it really it doesn't look very warm at all. So what does ChatGPT do? It takes a good look at the entire picture through its uh, ability to recognize images and it's given me some great advice. Look at this. Number one, area rugs. Adding a soft textured area rug under your desk or seating area can instantly make the space feel cozier. Very true. I might need to get one of those actually. And then we've got plants. I agree as well. This is calling out for plants, don't you think? This office. So introducing indoor plants can bring a touch of nature indoors. Plants like the snake plant, the pothos or fiddle leaf fig can liven up the space. It's even given us the kinds of plants that would be really good there as well. Wall art, textiles, some throw pillows on the chair and a soft throw blanket uh, draped over the chair can make the space inviting. True. Books, uh, yeah, if you think about it, some books on the shelf up there would look really good. And uh, then it's talking about colour, curtains, because at the moment we've just got a bare bones kind of window. Uh, and scents. Now there's something I wouldn't have thought of. Introduce a subtle, comforting scent using an essential oil diffuser. So that's brilliant advice. And for someone like me who's not really uh, very good at interior design, to be able to just do that and get some brilliant ideas straight away, using an actual photo of my office, not this one, if I was doing it properly, but isn't that brilliant? So that is feature number one. That's something that it can do is it can help you with interior design. The next one I wanna try now is uh, something I've heard it can do and, and something that it boasted about being able to do when it very first talked about GPT-4. I'm gonna drag in, by the way, you can just drag in images like this and just say, what can I make with the ingredients shown in this photo? Here we go. And here is a load of ingredients. And by the way, I know that the ingredients for this uh, will make bread. So hopefully it will it will actually come up with that. And also by the looks of it, there you go, pancakes or waffles, because you mix, and then it gives full instructions on how to do it. You know, mix flour, eggs, milk, bit of sugar, and baking powder to create a batter. Then we've got homemade bread, which is correct. That is what the ingredients were for when I did a search on Google. Oatmeal cookies, there's another good example. Crepes, very nice. What else we got coming here? Homemade pasta. Oh, I never thought about that one. So that's that's really clever. And then if we want to, we can always ask it for like further instructions on making the homemade bread or, or any of the other different things in there as well. An, an egg omelette, that's really good. So it, in that case, it's using some of the ingredients and not all of the ingredients. I would imagine if I altered my prompt to say using all of these ingredients, you know, please give me some recipes if I wanted to do that. Maybe if you had some food in your fridge, some ingredients, and then you wanted to use up everything you could in one go, then this could be a really, really helpful little tool. So I really quite like that one. That's a good use case for this. So let's do another one. Now, if you're at uh, see somewhere online, I often do this or on TV and I see a place, but I don't really understand or have time to look into where that place is. Let's take this city picture I'm dropping in right here. One, I'm going to see if it can identify where the city is and I've deliberately named the image with just city so it can't get any clues from the name of the image at all and I'm just going to ask like where is this in the world and can you tell me a little bit more about it? Let's do that. Where is this photo and tell me more about the place and what I can do there. There we go. Now let's see if it can recognize where this is. There are some, you know, what looks to be a very beautiful landmark there. Even I don't know where it is. I literally just grabbed 
grabbed it. There you go. So look at that. This photo showcases the Church of the Saviour on spilled blood in St. Petersburg, Russia. It's an iconic landmark of the city. And then it goes on to tell you all about the church. That's fascinating. And it's got that just from that that picture there in the background. You know, it's incredible, really, when you think about it, that it's able to just recognize everything in that photo and tell you immediately about it. So this could be quite useful for you if you're traveling or there's somewhere that you want to go or you see a photo on Instagram or something, but they don't say where it is. Um, then maybe ChatGPT can tell you where it is, tell you all about the place and help you even get there. So quite amazing. It's still going strong. And then giving us some more advice on things to do in St. Petersburg as well. And look at listing it all out. So fantastic. Another winning use case for this chat with images from ChatGPT. So now let's try another one. So funny thing this morning, it was raining like crazy here in the UK and I had this little fella appear on my patio, which is pretty much testament to the kind of rain that we get here in the UK, as you will see. So let's see if it can identify what it is in this picture. Can you tell me what this is in the photograph that I took this morning in the UK. Now I've given it a clue like by saying it in the UK because I'd like to uh, help it identify it and obviously narrowing down where that creature came from may help it a little bit. But there you go, yeah, this little friend just appeared on my patio this morning enjoying uh, being out in the wet weather. And there we go, the photograph you provided is of a frog Given that you mentioned it was taken in UK, it's likely to be a common frog, Latin name Rana tempororea or Roria, or another species native to the region. The amphibians can often be found in gardens, ponds, and woodlands throughout the UK. Brilliant. So it's identified it as the common frog um, due to the fact that I gave it a little bit of help in telling it where it, the picture was taken. But brilliant. If you ever see an animal out now and you're not quite sure what it is or some insect, then take a photo of it, put it into ChatGPT, and uh, there you go. And by the way, if you're liking all of these kind of tips, I've got to show you this free group that you can join. This is my group now. We have over 7,000 members, and we just obsess over ChatGPT, AI, uh, through AI images, you name it. It's completely free to join, and there is a link underneath this video if you want to come and join all 7,000 of us AI nuts. Um, so getting back to ChatGPT, now we can identify images. I'm going to try something else out as well. Now, this one is a tricky one. This one is a tricky one. I have got image here of a broken leg and I'm going to just drag it over because I see that it does as well a uh, .webp, uh, which is really good because a lot of software doesn't like webp images. And I'm just going to say, can you tell me what's wrong with this person's leg in the x-ray image. There we are. So I know that they've got a break, um, some kind of a stress fracture or something. Um, so it starts off with its warning, its standard warning that it that it has to do, I guess, to cover itself, which is I'm not a medical professional, but from the image provided, it appears there might be a fracture or break in the bone. If this is a concern, it's essential to consult with a medical professional. And there we are. It has spotted in the x-ray, this break, which is right here, this one doesn't look too good. I think that's another angle, actually, of the same leg. But it's spotted straight away, you know, that there is a break in there. So next up, let's try something different again. This is kind of fun. So I've got a guy here who's juggling, and I'm going to see um, if he recognizes that and also get it to teach me how to juggle. Can you tell me what's going on in this photo? Here we go. So there's a guy just stood there outside practicing juggling. Of course, in the photo, a young man is juggling red balls, which is picked out there, outdoors against the backdrop of blue sky with some clouds. He is focused on the balls in the air, which he is, he's looking up like that, and uh, ensuring they don't fall as he continues to juggle. In the distance, you can see a landscape of buildings, possibly a city or town. The image captures a moment of concentration and skill. That's awesome. Can you tell me the steps that I need to know to learn how to juggle? 
See if it can carry on. Why not? I could probably have asked it, can you teach me to do what the guy in the photo is doing as well, if I wanted to just bypass that. There you go. Certainly, Jason, juggling is a skill that requires practice, patience, and a gradual approach. And it tells us how to do juggling, you know? I mean, you've got love chat GPT, right? If you do like this, please do press that like button there if you're finding these use cases interesting. And let's move on to perhaps the most difficult use case of all. So what I've got here is an image of a website. It's just a, a nice kind of landing page image. And I would like to see if I can get ChatGPT to create the code necessary for me to create a similar page. Can you take a look at this screenshot and then create the HTML and CSS code required for me to have a page that is similar? In appearance. Here we go then. So there's the page. Let me zoom in a little bit there for you. It's just a nice kind of clean landing page and straight away it, it's looking at that. I can provide a simple HTML and CSS representation based on the screenshot provided. This won't be a pixel perfect replica but should give you a starting point. And look at this, it's, it's literally writing it all up. It's even read the text on the page where it says a Marva startup. It's, it's created it there, look, a Marva startup agency template, and it's created the HTML and still going and going and going. And I might actually just make this live and then I'll show you in just a second once it's done. So I copied all of the code that we've got here, put them into two separate files. This one here being the index.html and this one the styles.css. And then I loaded up the site and here it is. It's actually created a template and it's incredible. It's got all of the text right at the top. It's got all of this right as well. It's used the right color blue. Obviously it wasn't able to create a logo Although we could, of course, use Dali E if we wanted to now to go and create a logo and put it up there. But let's compare it to what we had here. There you go. So it's got home pages, services, elements, shop and blog. And then there we are at the top. Exactly right. Really good. But now what it can't do, of course, yet is to go and create this kind of image just here. I bet it's got the capability, but we can't do it. And uh, so it's left that part out. It's used blue from the logo, I think, just up here. And it hasn't sort of created any kind of background like that. But overall, still pretty impressive that it's managed to get all of the text right at the top there and make a half decent looking kind of initial landing page. So very, very cool. And I think this needs a little bit more experimentation, but you can see where this is headed and it is going to be pretty exciting stuff coming from ChatGPT, I think, over the next few months. So if you like this video, please do press like and subscribe for more videos about ChatGPT. And don't forget to come and join our free group here of over 7,000 members who are all ChatGPT and AI fanatics. That's it for this video. See you in the next one in just a second. Thanks for watching.